So what we were left with is that we are flying the plane and we're going from Chicago to Cleveland, all right? We want to fly straight though, and we have an issue. We have wind or air that's pushing down from the south, okay? Now, when the wind or the air pushes down on us, if we just try to fly straight without an angle, what would happen to us? We'd get pushed down, right? We're good pilots. So we are going to fly at an angle of theta, okay? We know we wanna go 500 miles per hour while we're flying. And we know that the wind is pushing down on us by negative 50 miles per hour. And we're just gonna keep everything in miles per hour for this. We're not gonna convert to meters or seconds or any of that, okay? Now the two things we need to find are the theta and how long it takes us to fly to Cleveland, all right? Now, the first thing that I'm gonna think when I see this is that we've been working with vectors. And we've been working with vectors, we've been breaking them up into what? <laughs> Starts with the components, yeah. So I wanna break this vector up into its two components with respect to theta, because theta is what I'm looking for. Okay, so how I'm going to do that is I'm going to say that the velocity of the plane in reference to the air is equal to, and we're going to get its x value and its y value. So if we're wanting its x value with respect to theta, what are we going to use? Are we going to use sine, cosine, or tangent? What do you think? Is this adjacent or opposite to the angle? Adjacent. And we were given the hypotenuse, right? So what are we going to use? Cosine. Okay. Now, that means we're going to have the cosine of theta is equal to x over the hypotenuse, right? And what are we going to do to get x by itself? Multiply that 500 over. So that means that our x component is going to be 500 cosine of theta. Then we need our y component. If our x is 500 cosine of theta, what do you think our y component is? Yep, 500 sine of theta. Because we're doing everything in reference to theta. All right. Now that we've got that, we can actually solve for theta. So listen up to how. You see this equation right here? These velocities already have, they're considered to already include the x and y components of everything, all right? That means you can break them up. You can have one with respect to y and one with respect to x. So we're going to look at the one with respect to y. And you'll see why we're doing that in a second. So what that will look like, though, is we'll have the velocity of the plane with respect to the ground's y component is equal to the velocity of the plane with respect to the air's y component plus the velocity of the air with respect to the ground of the y component. And this is when you guys see why we chose the y instead of the x, okay? The math is a lot easier. So the y with respect to the, with the plane and the ground, what is this vector's y component? Zero. It's zero, yeah. So we can put a big old zero there. We already found this, right? It's the 500 sine theta. So we can plug that in. And then... The y of the air with respect to the ground. What's its y component? It's just negative 50. So we can go ahead and put minus 50. What that does for us is it makes it so we only have one unknown. And what is that one unknown? Theta. Okay? So the only thing we don't know is theta. 
The first thing we're going to notice with this now then is that this 50 is getting subtracted from this term. So what are we going to do? <laughs> yeah, we're going to add it over. So we're going to have 50 equals 500 sine of theta. Now what do we want to do? Yes, ma'am, we're going to divide by 500. So 50 divided by 500 equals sine of theta. What's that last thing we need to do to get theta by itself? Inverse sine. Mm -hmm. inverse sine. So the inverse sine of 50 over 500 will give us our angle. So does anybody have what our angle is? Also, this is the hardest thing today that you're going to have to do. The problem says not as hard as this, okay? Do you have one? Uh, 5.74. Yes, sir. 5.74 degrees. All right. And if I wanted the direction with it, like I wanted you to say north, south, east, west, whatever, which one would it be? What would it be? Be a combination, right? North of east. Yep. Okay. So we found theta. What's the one other thing we wanted to find? How long does it take? Okay. Who remembers from way back when, when we said that the velocity was equal to displacement over change in time? That was like way back in the beginning, okay? We get to use it again, and we're going to use it to solve for time. So if you guys remember correctly, we would multiply the delta t over, and then we would end up with delta t equals delta x over b, right? It's an oldie but a goodie as far as equations go. So we already have delta x, don't we? What is it? Yeah, 300 miles. So all we have to find is the velocity. Okay, and we are in luck because we just had an angle. And to find this velocity, wouldn't we just do 500 cosine of 5.74? Because see how it's adjacent? So that would give us this right here, which also makes sense because the way the picture is drawn isn't the x component, just the velocity of the plane to the ground. Yeah, so we're going to do 500 cosine of 5.74. And what velocity is that going to give us? Yep, 497.5 or 49, whatever, miles per hour. All right, now that we have that, we can use that 300 you guys said and divide it by that velocity. And that will give us our time. See, we're just going to plug it in right here for me. So you guys said we went 300 miles. And we're going to divide that by 497.49 miles per hour. Now remember, it's okay if it's a small number because we're in hours, not seconds. Does anybody have an answer? Yeah, 0 0.60 hours. Okay, so this is all stuff you've already learned. This is just adding vectors, isn't it? It's just with the new spin on it. Now you have the word problems that are a little funky. Now, if this is stressing you out, we, we, we don't stick with relative motion very long. It's just sort of a fun thing to do to get your brain working in a new way before we go on to projectiles, which is 2D kinematics.